What we're going to do in this series is I'm going to go through all of the projects in both part one, part two, and the Panel View 800 manuals to make sure that they all line up perfectly. And I decided to record this process, but if you're not patient and you can't stand fast forward, then this one won't be for you. But if you need to learn slowly and you want to watch this video or this series of videos and then pause and work side by side with me. In other words, open up the software. I show you how to find it, download it, and then to create projects. I'm going to go right through the manual from beginning to end, both manuals and the HMI, and I'm going to do it right in sequence. I'm going to like, make changes. Basically, this will be a much longer series of videos, but if you want to learn a little slower and the other is too fast for you, this is your baby. So let's get at it. Okay, we're starting with a blank screen here. How you get to this next page is up to your computer and your browser. One way or the other, you're going to have to go to the Rockwell Automation website. You're going to have to go to Compatibility Download Center. You Compatibility Download Center, Multi Product Selector, and I typed in Connected. And if you look at your choices here, you could download the Accelerator Toolkit and the Building Blocks, but primarily what we're talking about is Standard Edition and Developer Edition. The Developer Edition you have to pay for, the Standard is free. So I'm going to click on that, and now it's showing all the versions all the way back to 1. The ones that you're interested in are 13 and 20. And we're going to go look at the processors that use these different versions. You can download either 13 or 20. My recommendation would be that you download 13. And I'll show you why here in a minute. So I'm going to collapse this down. And I'm going to open up Connected Components Workbench. Now I've got version 20. I have had some issues with that that I did not have with version 13. Now I'm going to show you why you really don't need to download 20 unless you're using very specific processors. So if I go to new and we'll just make it project X because I'm not going to save this. I'm going to create it. Go to controllers. I'm going to start with the 870. And you see under 870 there's two categories. There's LC70 and if I pick any of these, supports versions 11 and 12, just 12. Notice that this one only supports 12, this one 11 and 12, this one 11 and 12. If you're using these, any of these three processors or any of these processors, we'll click on one here, this LC50 supports all the way back to version 2. If I go to the simulator, it only supports 12. So 12 and below are supported by the non-E type. So if we go to L50E and you click on one of these, now you see it's only 20. If you click on one of these L70Es down here, any one of them, you're going to see it's only supported by 20. So if you're using the older processors, the ones that do not have an E in the part number, there, there's no reason, see, 11 and 12, 11 and 12, 11 and 12, just 12. So if we drop down to the 50s, see, automatically comes up at the highest, it supports just 12. This one supports all the way back to two. If I scroll up a little bit, I'll pick on the 20, these are all 12 and below. So you see there's no reason to download 20 until you need to. You don't want to involve yourself in any bugs that are in version 20 that weren't in version 12 or 13. I was using 13 for almost two years and had zero problems except with the simulator. And the technical support says that's because my processor, my tower, you know, my i7 is too fast, so we 
set the affinity, you know, how many cores you're using to a lower level. I have a video on that. You can find that on YouTube. I'm going to drop this out and go back to here. So when I pick Standard Edition and it comes up with all these versions, I suggest that you pick 13. Notice that they've got 13 and 20 lit up. That doesn't mean you can't pick 12. It's limited. I'm assuming that means it's limited to just the processors that it supports. It's retired. So if all these red ones with the red arrows, limited. If you got a red arrow, it's retired. If it's gray, it's limited. If it's green, it's current. I would probably pick 13 if I were you. You can download 20 later on. You would click on this and then you can click here and pick you know everything that you want. If you pick the whole thing it just takes longer to download but there's no problem with downloading everything because here you've got user manuals and if you uh, drag down a little bit further you can see there's some sample code, remote access tools. You probably want to download all of these unless you're in a hurry and if you are then just download just download version 13. I'm not going to continue because I have version 20 on my computer and you can't have two versions on your computer. There would be no reason to complete the download. You find your way to this site and then download it. So now let's pretend like you've got it downloaded and I'm going to open I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call it I'm going to create a new project pick a controller and notice that this is 12 down to 6 so 6 was the one that said limited and then there were some red ones in there that said retired so I'll just select that add to project and it's going to create a project for that LC20 QBB in revision 12. So even though I had you download 13, 13 does support programming 12 and lower. I've not seen anything yet that requires 13. So you have to wonder what kind of nomenclature walls that Rockwell Automation is doing with the revisions and mysteriously version 13 like I said I used that for a couple years I kept waiting for 14 finally one day I discovered by accident there was a new rev level and it was 20 so who knows what happened to 14 15 16 17 18 and 19 it really doesn't matter so here I've created a project and we're going to use this project to do our lab projects with in other words I'm opening up a project now I had already created one so I'm going to close this say no I'm going to open it up the software again now remember I've got 20 and I have the developers edition not the standard there are a few things that I can do with the developers that you can't with a standard but nothing that pertains to this course so I created a project called LC20 template and typically I create a template meaning I configure a project then I save it as the processor name or part number LC20 template but I never save projects by that name again I use that I open it and then I just plugged in the Ethernet cable into an LC20 20, 20 QBB I'm going to go to RS links classic I use RS links classic instead of enterprise because the people who are working out in the field now, they're familiar with Lynx Classic. So I'll go to Ethernet IP. So here, seeing LC50. So I'm going to remove that. The red X simply means that there was a time in the past when RS Lynx communicated with a LC50 at that IP address, but it doesn't find it now. So I'm going to remove it from its memory and if it pops back up it'll pop back up as that LC20. I just realized I reorganized my workspace I disconnected the Ethernet switch that goes from my 
tower computer to the massive arrangement of and there's my I'm going to try to do this in short segments but keep in mind that what you're watching is one continuous activity I'm just trying to stop edit the video when it's around 10 15 minutes just to give you a natural stopping place so we're nowhere near done with this subject let's continue on in the next video thank you